Hey guys, sorry about the delay in updates. Uh, as you can imagine, designing an exoskeleton isn't exactly the easiest task, so um, I'll try and give you guys as many updates as I can, but in all reality, this project's going to take a while, so you guys better be in for the long haul. Anyways, I just got my order in from Automation Direct, which means I can start playing with my new pneumatic cylinders and testing out some prototypes. I got all this stuff. <laughs> Flow control valves, inline, T adapters, Y adapters, more T adapters, more hose fittings, um, on off valves, more hose fittings, and 3 8 inch OD pneumatic tubing. This is for the bigger cylinders. So it's awesome that this stuff came in because I've been itching to test some uh, ideas that I've had. So, as you know, the problem right now with the prototype is when I actuate the cylinders, they're either on or off, which is great for lifting things, but what if I wanted to hold my arm halfway up? I can't do that with the current system. They're either on or they're off. Hydraulics is better for that because you can control the flow of hydraulic fluid because it's incompressible. That's why you can have a forklift that can lift up halfway or all the way and have the same holding force at any, any uh, position of the cylinder. With pneumatics, you can't do that because air is compressible. So as soon as you add a higher load to something you're picking up, suddenly the pressure in the cylinder increases and the height can actually decrease. So, if you can't control the position of the pneumatic cylinder by um, controlling the flow of the air going in, since it's compressible, then the only way to control the position is to control the pressure. So what I've got here is a little idea I've had. So the system is actually pretty simple. What happens is, instead of having a valve bank controlling pressure going in or out of the cylinder, you have two pressure regulators. And what you do is you set these at 50% both ways, and you couple them together. So what that means is, in the neutral position, the cylinder will be in the center if there's no load. And that's because, for argument's sake, let's say it's 100 PSI. So you set both of these to 50 PSI. That means there's 50 PSI on this side and there's 50 PSI on that side. And the cylinder will stay in the halfway position. But as soon as you turn this, you can turn this one up to 100 PSI, which in turn turns this one down to 0 PSI which suddenly means you're still at your 100 PSI system pressure, but it's all in the top and not in the bottom. This way you can actually control the position up and down using the flow controls, or sorry, the pressure regulators. So let's build one and see how it works. So while I was in California for Hackaday, I stopped at Harbor Freight Tools, which is this amazing tool store that's only in the US. And I may have bought a second luggage carry-on bag just to bring tools back to Canada because the prices are so amazing. You guys should really check it out if you haven't been there before. Anyways, they had pressure regulators for 5 bucks each, 0 to 200 PSI. That's freaking awesome. That is super cheap. You can't get these cheaper on the internet, which is quite incredible, really. Alright, so to build this, I'm going to need the pressure regulators. I need a cylinder to test. I need some, let's see, 3 8 to 3 8 MPT um, hose fittings for the cylinder. And then the pressure regulator is actually quarter inch MPT to 3 8 hose. So I'll need four of those there as well. I'll need a T for the supply line and a pneumatic fitting to plug into the air compressor, along with a bunch of hose. So that means this actually has an exhaust in it to reduce the pressure. So the tank pressure will always stay the same, it's controlling the pressure on the other side. So if you want to relieve that pressure, it actually exhausts some of the air out of this. So we got our cylinder, I'm sure it's got room to extend. We got our two flow control valves. Plug it in. 
let's see what happens when we plug this in. Oh, it does something. Yeah, can't do this one handed. All right, so I accidentally plugged the one pressure regulator in backwards, as you can see. Um, pressure is supposed to be going in this way, instead I had it going out, like this one. So that meant the air was actually just going into this regulator and being exhausted. Flip it around. All right, now we should be good, good to go. Let's plug this in again. There we go. All right, so there is pressure in the system now. Now we just have to play with the flow controls. So let's adjust this. System pressure is about 120, so we're going to adjust both these regulators to 60. Here's 60 over there. Now, equal pressure. This guy should be in the middle, shouldn't it? Well, the problem with pneumatic cylinders is there's the bore, which is the, the tube it's in, and there's the piston. On the one side, it's just the piston and then air. On the other side, there's the piston and the rod. So the effective air area for the pressure to act on is smaller on the one side. So that's why it doesn't want to move right now. If I try moving it, can't do that either. So let's play around the uh, flow control, pressure control, and see what happens. So let's drop this one down. And we'll see, now it starts to raise. This is Big Bertha, by the way. At 125 PSI, she's putting out 970 pounds. So I couldn't push that down if I wanted to. All right, so we've got 20 PSI in the front. We can drop that even more if we want, right? So now it's basically zero. And we got 60 on the other side. Doesn't matter if we increase this or not. It's not going to actually have an effect because it's already extended all the way. But what we can do is put this back to 60. Or sorry, we'll keep it at 100 and 20. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to loosen this one and tighten this one, and we'll see that the uh, cylinder goes back. So gotta go. Let's see left that way, which means I have to go right this way. So if I adjust it really quick, yeah. see it was actually generating pressure in there from this one pushing. Um, so it's not perfect, but it definitely gives you that control of being able to control where you want the cylinder to be. So watch. Turn this the other way. Turn this back. Let's go with about halfway. And stop. See? Let's say I want to go to right here. Let's try doing it. So, my plan for the exoskeleton is, if I couple these two guys together permanently, so when you spin one, it unspins the other, that way I can use a servo motor to actually control the flow of air going to my cylinders. This is awesome because a servo motor, just a little like an RC car servo motor, is much, much cheaper than an industrial valve bank. So I can actually get rid of the valve bank and just use these. The one thing I can't do with this right now is I can't have the exoskeleton very flexible because it's always going to be holding really, really tight no matter where it is. So what I'm thinking of doing, in addition to having these, I might have exhaust valves on both of these which I can trigger to have a, a free moving mode. Problem is I'll be losing air unless I can turn it off over here too. So I might still need some kind of valve bank, but you get the idea. So I think that's pretty cool. 
So all this is pretty cool, but the one thing we're neglecting in this little ex uh, science experiment is there's no load on the cylinder. So as soon as you have an external load on this, it's going to change the way these guys operate. It's still going to work, it just means at 75% this one, 25% this one, it's not going to be at 25% stroke because there's an external load pushing on it. So you'll still have the full range of motion even if there is a load on it, it's just it won't be in the same place. Now that's something we can handle with some kind of control system for on the software side of things. We have load sensors on there or or you know what, it might not even matter. Say, I want to lift my arm this high while I'm holding the weight. I can just do it until I hit that weight and then stop. So, I don't see that being a problem. Um, gonna have to do some more tests with this, but, um, yeah. Oops. Hope you guys are excited. I am. <laughs> so the next step is building a little housing that can put these two, um, pressure regulators together and couple them. So when you turn one, it turns the other the opposite direction. So that's the next thing I'll have to build and I'll probably laser cut that because it will just be a little housing that I have to make. To remove the actual caps, they've just got these kind of like a nail stuck in the side. So I just have to remove that and I'll be able to pull the plastic cap off and there'll be some kind of nut on the other side. So then I can either weld that nut to this one and so it's permanent or doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll figure out how to do it, but that's the next step. Anyway, that's about all for uh, this update. Um, lots of design work now, working in SolidWorks. So I'll have another update video for you next week, hopefully. And um, again, I won the Boca Bearings contest, or at least the first part of it, so I won a GoPro. Pretty awesome. And you don't have to vote anymore. The contest is over. Uh, but in December, that's when Boca Bearings decides who's the grand prize winner, which means I might win the $5,000 cash, which would be amazing, because all this stuff, that box is like $200 worth of crap. Well, it's not crap, but it gets, it gets expensive. So yeah, in uh, other news, I just found out I'm actually going to be on Daily Planet on the Discovery Channel sometime in November showing off the uh, first exoskeleton. So I got a lot of work to do before then because I want to show off some of the designs of the uh, of the upgrades I'm planning. Um, and then they said we'll have a follow-up segment sometime in the spring to uh, show how far I've come. Assuming I've built it by spring. It takes a while. Anyways, thanks again for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, and share all my videos. Uh, the bigger the YouTube channel gets, the more time I'm going to have to work on this cool stuff. So please, please, please. If you have a friend who th you think would uh, enjoy these videos, tell them about my channel. The bigger the channel gets, the better the channel gets. Thanks for watching. If you're one of my super fans and you really want to help support this project by donating to it, I'd invite you to check out my Patreon campaign. It's kind of like a Kickstarter, except it's for content producers. And as a reward for donating to the channel, you get behind-the-scenes access and extra updates on my projects.